I'm Eddie Muller, welcoming you to Noir Alley. Many of the films I show here are picked specifically to prove that noir wasn't confined to melodramas that sported hard-boiled dialogue and expressionistic shadows. Tales of cruel fate featuring self-destructive protagonists weren't exclusive to crime dramas. Noir's existential dread could, for instance, seep into something as seemingly innocent as a county fair or a traveling carnival. Like our film today, Nightmare Alley, released by 20th Century Fox in 1947. Actor Tyrone Power read the novel, written by William Lindsay Gresham, when it was published in 1946. He begged 20th Century Fox chief Daryl Zanuck to buy it for him as a starring vehicle. Power was the studio's most reliable romantic leading man, star of such popular hits as The Mark of Zorro, Blood and Sand, and The Black Swan. But by 1947, Power felt he had buckled enough swash. He wanted to mix things up, stretch his range, and dirty up his romantic image a bit. So Nightmare Alley represented quite a risk for both the studio and the actor. The character of mentalist Stan Carlyle, the great Stanton, shows off the actor's astounding charisma and charm, but for the first time, he's also a cynical, cold-hearted charlatan. Are you insane? That's not a bad hunch, lady. Power's previous film, his first after serving in the Marine Corps in World War II, was The Razor's Edge, also directed by Edmund Goulding. It gave the actor one of his most complex roles, as a man on a spiritual quest to discover the meaning of life. In Nightmare Alley, he's that character's devilish opposite, a calculating opportunist whose greatest satisfaction comes from bilking the rubes and suckers, who, as someone once noted, are born every minute. Step right this way, move in closer, ladies and gentlemen, and let me introduce Zena, the miracle woman of the ages. She sees, she knows, she tells you all the innermost secrets of your past, your present, and your future. The character of the all-American huckster and the carnival life that spawned him had always intrigued writer William Lindsay Gresham, especially after he met a veteran carny named Doc Halliday while serving as a medic during the Spanish Civil War. Gresham wrote one great book of nonfiction about the carny life, 1953's Monster Midway, but it was the fictional Nightmare Alley that would be his legacy. Gresham had a deep interest in spiritualism, but his skeptical nature and his insider's view of the show business side of salvation led him to systematically debunk all soothsayers, from fortune tellers to evangelists to Scientology, which he'd explored and abandoned in its earliest incarnation. Of all the films of the classic era that can be called noir, Nightmare Alley is perhaps the most prescient in its depiction of charismatic con men duping gullible folks simply by telling them what they want to hear and picking their pocket as part of the exchange. Not that anyone wanted to hear it in 1947. As Daryl Zanuck feared, Nightmare Alley was a resounding flop. Audiences refused to accept Tyrone Power as a villain. The actor, however, would have the last laugh once freed from years of legal entanglement, Nightmare Alley's reputation has grown steadily. The film had been out of circulation for decades when I resurrected it at a screening in Hollywood more than 20 years ago. After that show, a man approached me and confided that the code phrase, you may know my friend, Stan Carlyle, was regularly used by con artists in the New Age self-help movement as a way of tipping off other grifters that they were hip to any scams. It turns out that Gresham's cautionary tale had also become a how-to guide for phony spiritualists and healers. Today, Nightmare Alley is increasingly recognized as not only a terrific noir, but one of the most powerful movies of the 1940s. Hell, it's one of my favorite movies, period. It features an astounding supporting cast topped by three unforgettable female characters, played brilliantly by Joan Blondell, Colleen Gray, and Helen Walker. I'm proud to present, on his birthday no less, Tyrone Power giving what, for me, is his greatest performance. Step right up, folks. We're about to enter Nightmare Alley.